Hi everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about what I did to manage my time as best I could in my final year of high school. This is one of the videos I've been wanting to make for a really long time since time management is such a big deal and it can really change the way you experience your year 12. If you don't know me, my name is Emil and I'm a first year medical student currently studying at Monash University in Melbourne, Australia. I didn't take a gap year or anything like that so what that means is that I graduated from year 12 in the year where we had all the quarantines and all the lockdowns. So I think that gives me a special place in trying to give some tips about how I managed my time. There is genuinely far too much to cover for time management in just one video. So I tried to boil down the six most important things, three mindsets and three tactics that I used that helped me to manage my time as best I could in year 12. These strategies and tips are things I actually still use to this day because I find them so helpful in trying to cut through the excuses that you might make for yourself and also to help yourself focus on the work that needs to be done. Before we start though, let's get into the obvious disclaimer that all of us study YouTubers have to put at the start of our videos, which is that just because I did something a certain way doesn't mean you have to do it that way or that if you're doing something different, it's wrong or that you're doing yourself poorly. Everyone works in different ways and I'm just sharing this so that hopefully you could maybe learn something new about what you might want to do or that maybe you can try something that you haven't tried or heard of before. With that important stuff said though, let's get straight into the video. The first mindset is one that I keep trying to think of myself in my everyday life, which is that you do have enough time. Sorry to call everyone out like this and I'm definitely guilty of it myself, but I do think the idea that people don't have enough time to do something is completely false. I definitely think that presenting certain things as an issue with time is really an excuse people make to sort of shift the burden off themselves for not being able to do certain things. Where I'm going with this mindset is that if you want to be really effective with your time management strategies, you need to be fairly harsh on yourself about how much you're using your time and how much time you have and whether you're actually wasting your time or if you actually don't have time to do something. The truth is that most of the time for most of us, if you weren't able to do something or if you're not pursuing X goal, it's not actually because you don't have enough time, it's because you're not managing your time well enough. Unless you're someone like a single mother or someone working a part-time job alongside their schooling to feed their family, you probably do have enough time to do the things that you say you want to do. And the fact that you're watching this video probably means that you're not either of those people. In that case, what I really encourage you to do and what I'm trying to do as well all the time is to drop that excuse and to take responsibility and to own the time you actually have. This mindset is something I'm working on to this day and I will continue to work on in the future. But the truth is that if you really want to work on something, you would have done it already. And because of that, you really should drop the excuse that you don't have enough time to do something. The second principle or mindset that I had in the back of my mind during year 12 was Parkinson's law. You've probably heard of Parkinson's law already from some other study YouTubers, but it's the idea that work expands to fill the time that you allocate to it. Basically what this means is that if you gave equal amounts of work to two people and you gave one person four hours to do it and the other person 24 hours to do it, it's not likely that both people would finish the same amount of work in four hours each. What's more likely to happen is that the second person who has 24 hours to do the task will take the full 24 hours to do the task. Now this is really interesting to me because I think it kind of illustrates to me as well why I struggled so much in quarantine to do work and why I felt so unmotivated. Because I had so much time in quarantine because I didn't have extracurriculars to do or stuff to do outside of school, I found that I had so much time to do my work and that because of that time, I was wasting a lot of it and I wasn't feeling like I was doing any work or being productive. I think Parkinson's law also explains to a certain degree why people are always finishing their assignments in a mad dash on the last day or the day before and also doing their homework the day before it's due. Now, I know it sounds like a bit of doom and gloom at the moment, but you can definitely take advantage of Parkinson's law by setting yourself due dates in your day-to-day -day life. Now, this can take the form of to-do lists where you might set certain amount of tasks that you wanna finish by the end of the day. But if you're not very good at keeping yourself accountable, you can also do something like emailing your teachers to tell them that you're going to submit a draft by a certain day. Now doing this can mean that you get an unofficial due date that you have to submit some work by. And it also means that you can do that work by that time because you're more likely to feel the due date 
and then you'll also get some nice feedback on the work that you submit. I personally use that second strategy quite a lot because I found that I really benefited from setting myself due dates and I didn't want to disappoint my teachers by not fulfilling a promise I had made to them earlier the week. My third principle in year 12 was that if I was working, I wanted it to be in the flow state or I might as well not be working at all. If you're wondering what the flow state is, it's probably something you've actually experienced before. It's that feeling you get when you're completely focused on the work you're doing and you forget everything around you and you lose track of time. I found that if you're studying in the flow state, you become so much more productive and you get so much more work done and it's actually more enjoyable and fulfilling in the first place. My principle in year 12 was that if I was studying, I wanted it to be in this flow state that I'm talking about or I might as well not be studying at all. I know this can sound really ridiculous and kind of idealistic at first, but in practice, what this meant was that if I was studying, I wanted it to be in a place where I wasn't getting distracted and I know I'd be able to study there for a couple of hours at least. It also meant that if I was studying and I realized that I wasn't getting into the flow state, I'd sort of try my best to realize that as quickly as possible and do something else for maybe 20, 30 minutes or so and then come back when I thought I'd be more likely to get into the flow state. I feel like doing that helped me to stop myself from feeling like I'm banging my head against a wall trying to study when I didn't feel like it and also meant that I was more likely to be productive in the times that I actually was studying. What this also meant though is that I really sucked at studying at school because I felt like all the people around and the distractions made it so hard for me to get into a place where I could focus and study for a really long time. In addition, you'd often get cut short by the bell or cut off by the end of the period, which would mean that I really couldn't focus that well at school. Now, this actually leads me on perfectly into the first tactic in this video, which is that you should find a place where you can work effectively. For me, this place was the desk that I had at home. I found that it was really easy for me to just put away my phone and study at home because there were no distractions, no people around to sort of disturb me or make me less motivated to study. You might be thinking at this point that I'm not really giving any time management tips because this is just about the place that I'm studying, but I do think that it actually saves so much time when you work and you're very, very focused in that flow state. I might be starting to sound like a broken record, but when you're fully paying attention and you're fully focused on the task at hand, it makes you so much more effective when you're studying. And I feel like that pays huge dividends in the long run because you can actually save time in doing study that's more effective than trying to bang your head against a wall and do study that's ineffective for longer periods of time. That's why I think finding out where you work best, getting into the flow state in that location and studying there as much as you can actually helps you to save so much time down the line. The second time management tip I have is a bit more traditional and it's that I used my extracurricular activities and hobbies to cut out the dead time that I had during the week. Now, what I mean by this dead time is like that procrastinating time where you might be scrolling through your phone after finishing a bit of work. What I try to do as best as I could and what I still try to do is that when I start to sort of pick up my phone, maybe notice that I'm about to start a scroll, I'll stop myself and try my best to do something else instead. For me, what those activities were is that when I realized that I might be heading into a procrastination session, I'd pick up my violin and practice violin for 20 minutes or I'd write a debating speech and instead I'd be doing something that I found more fulfilling and more useful in general. What happens to too many of us including myself still is that you go on your phone and then all of a sudden oh damn it's 10 p.m you've wasted two hours and you feel awful i find noticing that time as quickly as possible and replacing it with something that's in general more fulfilling and more useful will end up leaving you feeling happier and more likely to work as well once you finish with doing that activity. So the last tactic that I'll mention to you guys today is setting up a routine. The reason I think setting up a routine is so important in year 12 is that it helps you to actually apply the other tactics that I'm talking about in this video and also to keep your life sort of somewhat stable during a very chaotic time. For me, what this routine was is that pretty much every day once I came home from school, I'd have like this 30 minute to an hour block where I just get a shower and drink some afternoon tea with a snack before I set in to do some work. I feel like having this buffer from 5 p.m. to like 5.30 from when I got home after maybe soccer training or music really helped me to feel more productive when I was working and when I started working at 5.30. I feel like having a simple routine like the one I just mentioned when you get home every day can really help to add some stability to your life and also make you feel more purposeful when you start working in the evening. So that wraps up three mindsets and three tactics that I use to manage 
manage my time well in year 12 or my final year of high school. If you found these tips helpful or if you enjoy study related or med school related content, please do subscribe to the channel and drop a like on the video. I'll make sure to be posting one video every week on a Monday. I also have an Instagram, so feel free to send me a DM asking me any questions that you'd like. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.